is dealing with something that you guys will feel a little bit more familiar with um, from financial accounting, journal entries. So what we do here in terms of job order costing, again, we're tracking each job individually, but again, we still have to track and journalize um, those costs that are happening. So we do have to journalize um, things like requisitioning materials, purchasing materials, incurring direct labor, applying out overhead, all of that still actually has to be journalized, um, and we're going to do that here. So exercise 450, they give us some transactions, transactions A through G. They also give us beginning balances in our materials, in our work in process, and our finished goods. And they want us to repair our journal entries for transactions A through G, prepare a brief job order cost sheet for jobs 58, 59, and 60, and then calculate our ending balances in our three inventory accounts, which are raw materials, work in process, and finished goods. So we're going to journalize each one of these entries. I strongly recommend when you're doing this, Anytime something affects a job that would be included in the job order cost sheet, do it as you journalize. It makes things a little bit easier as you go. So in transaction A, we've purchased materials on account for $29,670 on account, one of our favorite phrases from a print financial accounting, right? We know that that means we're buying those materials and we're not paying for them yet. So my raw materials account is going to increase. It's an asset account because it's something that we own for $29,670. And we're going to owe it. So we have accounts payable for that $29,670. In B, it says we requisitioned materials totaling $24,500 for use in production. Of the total, $9,200 was for job 58. 8,900 was for job 89, and the remainder was for job 60. So if you remember, I believe it's in chapter two that they talk about material requisition forms. So when I'm working on a job and I need to get raw materials out of my warehouse, I actually have to fill out a materials requisition form, which is going to say for job, you know, 58, I need $9,200 in, you know, raw materials, whatever those materials are. I'd hand that to the warehouse director, they pull out the $9,200 of materials and give them to me, and then that is actually passed on to the cost accountant to track that $9,200 in materials have been used for that specific job. We only do one journal entry to show the materials that have been requisitioned, but we break out that detail onto those job order cost sheets. So anytime we are requisitioning materials anytime that we are incurring direct labor, anytime that we have applied overhead, all of that goes into our work in process account. Again, it's an inventory account. It's going to stay in there until we actually complete jobs. So we're going to increase our work in process account by that 24,500. And what's going to go down is our raw materials by that same amount. So while we have this information available to us, we're going to add it to our job order cost sheet. So they said $9,200 of the $24,500 was for job 58. $9,900 of those materials were for job 59. And the remainder was for job 60, or $6,400. So we're going to track that information individually on the job order cost sheet. We journalize just one entry for all the materials that were requisitioned during that for that period of time. In C, it says we've incurred direct labor costs of $32,400. The average wage rate is $18 per hour. Job 58 used 800 hours. Job 59, 600 hours. And job 60, 400 hours. So again, we're going to do one journal entry, and we're going to increase again work in process for all of the labor costs that we have, or 32,400. And we're going to 
to our workers for working for us. So we got a wages payable that we're going to increase here. So they told us that how many hours each one of these jobs used. And our employees get $18 per hour. So $18 per hour and job 58 used 800 hours. Job 59 used 600 hours, and job 60 used 400 hours. And if we add it up, we see we get back to that 32,400, which matches our journal entry we just made. In transaction D, it says we incurred and paid actual overhead of $17,880, and they said use front of the account various payables. So unless they tell you various payables, if it just says paid, you'd use cash. Um, but they told us to credit an account called various payables that we're going to do. So we have an account called the overhead control account. And the overhead control account is literally going to capture all of our actual overhead costs. And it's going to capture how much has been applied out of that. So Anytime we incur actual costs, we're going to debit the overhead control account. Anytime we apply out overhead, we're going to credit the account. This is the account that's going to show us at the end of the year whether we have an over-applied or an under-applied variance. And they told us to put it to various payables, which we will do. Actual overhead costs do not impact my job order cost sheet because remember it's applied overhead that we look at we don't deal with actuals in terms of the cost that we have in transaction e it says charged overhead to production at a rate of four dollars and eighty cents per direct labor hour so uh, our predetermined overhead rate is four dollars and eighty cents per direct labor hour and we're going to apply it up. We're actually going to do it over here first to make it a little bit easy for us. So $4.80 per direct labor hour. Well, back in transaction C, they told us how many hours each job worked. So we're going to multiply this by 800 for job 58. We're going to multiply it by 600 for job 59. And we're going to multiply it by 400 for job 60. So in total, that means we have $8,640 in applied overhead. Again, applied overhead is part of our product cost, so it goes into our work in process, and we credit that overhead control account to show that some of that $17,880 has in fact been applied out to some of the jobs that we've had. So before we do our next journal entry, we're going to need to total up our job order cost sheets here. So in transaction F, it says we completed and transferred jobs 58 and 59 to finish goods. So both of these jobs have been completed. So we can't keep them in our work in process account. We have to transfer them of work in process and put them into our other inventory account, which is finished goods. So in total, these two jobs cost us $50,020 to complete. So we're going to increase our finished goods by that $50,020, and we're going to decrease our work in process account by $50,020. Again, Raw materials, work in process, and finished goods are all asset accounts. We have three different levels of inventory accounts um, when we are a manufacturing business. So we're simply moving assets from one asset category to another once we've completed it. In G, it says we sold job 57, and it says see the beginning balance in finished goods. So job 57 was in finished goods at the start of this period, and it cost us $25,600 to complete job 57. And we're selling job 58 to their respective clients on account for a for price of a cost plus 40%. 
So if you remember from financial accounting, every time we sell a product, we have to have two journal entries. One to record what we are selling it for, the other to record the cost to us. So we're gonna record the cost first because that will make our second entry a little bit easier. So we're selling two jobs. We're selling job 57 and 58. So cost of goods sold is going to be our debit. It's our expense account. So job 57, again, cost of my job here, 25,000. 600 plus the cost of job 58 of the 27,440 and it's coming out of finished goods. Both of those jobs were sitting in my asset category of finished goods waiting to be sold and in fact we now have sold them. And they said we charge our customers cost plus 40 percent and we're doing this on account. So we have our accounts receivable, and we have our sales revenue that we're gonna deal with. So cost plus 40%. So our total cost for those two jobs was $53,040, and we're gonna multiply it by 1.4. So one is the decimal version of 100%, and we wanna capture 100% of, of our cost because we wanna recoup that. 0.4 is the decimal version of 40%. It's going to tack on the markup that we are doing um, and what we're charging our customers. So we're going to charge our customers $74,256 for the jobs that cost us $53,040. So now they want us to figure out what our ending balance is, is in our raw materials, work in process, and finished goods. So they told us that for our materials, we started the period at $2,300. We know that we went out and purchased some more. We purchased $29,670. And we requisitioned $24,500. So my Ending raw materials at the end of this month would be at $7,470. Work in process didn't have any beginning balance, and the only job that was still in process as of the end of this month was job 60, so our ending work in process balance is just going to be that $15,520. Finished goods, we started with $25,600. Here we started as our beginning balance at 25,600. Jobs completed that we transferred in to finished goods was 50,020. Jobs sold, we sold $53,040. So if we total this up, we are left with an ending balance in finished goods of 22580 which notice matches job 59, because that's the only job that we have completed have not in fact sold as of the end of the month, because we sold job 58, we sold job 57.